Is this working? All right. Good morning. Take a walk with me again. Walking my dog, walking myself before I begin work. Uh, I get to work from home today. I'm excited about that. I really hate going into the office, y'all. I don't, I don't think you really appreciate how much I hate being in the office. I hate the office politics. I hate the little pettiness sometimes you see from other coworkers and the stress from your supervisors. Even though I have great supervisors, I have to, have to say. Um, what else do I hate about it? I just hate sitting there all day feeling confined, I really do. Um, you know, I can do the same work at home in my home office and get a lot more done with none of the stress or irritation. Anyway, today's kind of over, kind of over, what's the word for what I'm looking for? It's, you know, overly gloomy is what I'm trying to say. And it's just interesting. I'm not used to it being this shady and dark this time of the morning. I want the sun to start coming out earlier. Get my mood up. Anyway, walking gets my mood up. Talking to you all gets my mood up. So, I'm using my, what do you call this? I, I should know what this is. I forgot got the name of it already anyway I, I purchased this monopod yeah it's called a monopod so I put my phone on it on it and it allows me to kind of free my hands somewhat and give you all a better view of what's going on I like it it's my first time using it ever I'm experimenting we'll see what else I can do I also bought something else that lets me put my camera on a um, a little mini tripod with a remote so that's gonna be good because I want to start filming my gardening soon so I'm trying to experiment modernize my stuff a little bit Where's my dog? all right so let's see what do you want to talk about today there's so many things going on a lot of you have already been commenting and you You've seen my previous videos that I have posted up. And I want to comment on some of the comments because your comments are hilarious. I love it. And I haven't read everything, but a couple of them stood out. And I also want to kind of finish up part two, was it part four by now, of the tenant damages. Yeah, I gave, I gave you all a cliffhanger last time. And of what happened with that tenant who whose sons or who, you know whose sons were living in her apartment and were re recently you know out of jail and part of a gang and had guns all this stuff so if we have some time today i'll do what i can i should have about 15 minutes before i have to get back on that computer and as I'm walking, you'll be able to kind of see some of the stuff going on on the property. Zeus, I hear you, but I can't see you. There he is. My buddy. <laughs> so, before I go on to the last video that I posted, let's talk about my, that, that former tenant. So, We left off where one of my tenants who lived downstairs was afraid to live in the apartment anymore because the son of the lady who lived upstairs sort of, you know, low-key threatened her, you know, and showed his gun that he wasn't supposed to have because he's a felon. And, you know, it was well known that he is part of a gang. So, hope I'm not wavering this too much, you all. I had to get involved. My experiment or my, my attempt to let everybody work it out for themselves and 
just kind of work that out and keep me out of it did not work so now I'm looking at real liability looking at a lady who has a temper and didn't let and I didn't know she had a temper before I you know finalized her leasing and I'm also looking at you know some adult males or almost adult males living in her house who have a propensity towards violence and I have to figure out a way to communicate to her in a way that's safe for me and for the tenant that this behavior is not acceptable. And I also have to find a way not to take sides because I already know at this point she's gonna come back with her version of events, which is what happened. So I called her on the phone. I said, hey, I'm gonna give you a fake name for her. I'm just gonna call her Patty. I said, hey, Patty. Um, I got to talk to you. I said, I don't want to do this, but I, I have to have this conversation with you. And I, and I let her know, my, you know, I have a report that, you know, a male who is identified as your son is living with you. That same male made a threat towards the tenant downstairs. I said, we also have issues with you parking in the parking space. For the tenant down below, we have an issue with you making, you know, threatening and harassing remarks to her, intimidation tactics. I want your side of it. And true to form, you know, she uh, proceeded to begin yelling and ranting and raving. She cursed me out call me all kind of names and you know right there I should have just ended the conversation and just let her know I'm going to be you know I'm going to just end your lease but you know when you're working with you know public housing and working with women who are distressed or people who are distressed you know well this is what I do I try to work with people I mean, we went through all of this work to get her in this apartment. She had previously been homeless, living in a motel with her three with three of her children. And you know, I had a lot of empathy and a lot of just just a lot of compassion for her, even in her distressed state. State. I could imagine what she was going through because I don't know if I told you all this in one of my previous videos, and if I hadn't, I will talk about that you know be for a while there my own parents were separated for years and it was because of the drug addiction of my dad my dad just lost his mind and you know a man who had a a master's degree from Colgate Divinity and Colgate Divinity School, I think it's in Rochester, and he had a law degree from DePaul University. He was a probation officer. You know, intelligent man. My dad is just fiercely intelligent. And old school Southern man, right? He just, he lost his, he just lost his mind. He's, he distressed of having two children at the time, my, uh, myself and my sister and my mom, you know, he just got caught up got caught up in the in the in the drug epidemic in the late 70s and early 80s and he was so out of it that you know by the time but by the, by the time they had five kids total so with me my sister Amy and then I have um, Simone which you've seen on the on the nursing video and then there's um, my other two brothers you know, I'm the oldest of five. It was five of us, three of them babies. He left. He left. It was because of drugs. You know, and I'll tell you that story. I will tell you that story because I thought I had, but if I hadn't, I will. I will tell you that story because it's quite powerful and, and painful and beautiful and bittersweet and redemptive. It really is because I'll give you a little hint. My mom took him back nine years later or ten years later, but... That's all I'm going to say. But we lived in a motel. When my dad left us, 
you know, the drugs took everything away from us. We were, we at the time, were living in Chicago, and we were living in a nice brownstone on Colfax. Those of you who are from Chicago, you know Colfax Avenue. And back then, Colfax was a very nice neighborhood. Beautiful apartment, top floor, big and spacious. We went to great schools. I was going to a magnet school as a little girl. And we had like several cars and took vacations. We were like, you know, a, a, an American working class, black family making it. And then we went from that to living in a motel in, in Calumet City, Illinois. And my dad left, you know? And so it's just my mom trying to figure out how to take care of all five of us. It was terrifying. And, and as the oldest one, I had to, I couldn't, I couldn't, where did my dog go? He went up in those woods. So I, I'm sorry, y'all. Distract, I'm getting distracted. Let me walk towards my dog. Um, oh, there he is. As the oldest one, I could not, I couldn't act up. I, I didn't have the, the, the freedom and the gaiety of a normal 11 year old child because I was 11 when all of this occurred. Oh, actually I was 10. Yeah, cause we stayed in that motel for a year. So I, 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 you know, I couldn't be happy and gay. I had to stay responsible and keep calm for my mom and help babysit my brothers and sisters. My other sister was maybe yeah, was two years younger than me. And you know, a very immature two years younger. So I was 10, she was eight. Had to keep her calm. And then um, the youngest baby was, actually she was pregnant with the youngest when we went to the, whole, to the motel. But then uh, my brother and sister were twins. They were one, we went to the motel and you had the infant show up like halfway through the year. So I just had to be responsible because everything was stressful. We were constantly worried that, you know, protective services would come and take us. I was, I was worried about my mom. I knew she had high blood pressure and she was stressed. And there were times I would hear her crying at night in the bathroom. I wouldn't let her know that I knew. So there were times there just wasn't enough money to to buy food <laughs> but we were never hungry for some my mom managed to find a way to kind of bring it together but we all we had to always make sure the babies ate first so we had to scrounge together change some kind of way for ice and meal for the three youngest and when i think about it i don't think my mom was on we found food stamps i don't think she was like, we were always using cash when we went shopping and I don't know where she got the cash from because my dad wasn't around and my mom has passed away and I, I really would love to know like what was she what was she doing to get the cash I don't know I don't know what happened I, got, I had to figure that one out but it was just a stressful time you know we were going to public school uh, at Calumet I think it's Calumet Elementary you need to look that up and, um, you know, we had to just, just stay, you know, stay calm don't, and not act out too much so that the teachers wouldn't have any indication we were living in a motel because I don't, I don't know how it is now, but back then they very well would just come and just take, they just swoop in and just take everybody and all five of us would have been sent to five different homes, right? So you're living like this under this pressure and going back to patty i had that in my mind because a lot of people who knew the situation was like why did you wait so long to let her go you know that was like it, it, it was just horrible it could have been dangerous anybody somebody could have gotten shot or killed and she was not being respectful to you and i said because you know i remember how my what my mom went through and these same people knew my mom and they were like but your mom never behaved that way your mom was just beautiful and sweet and kind no matter what stress she was under she was just the sweetest person on the planet this person is a monster 
and you know but still i was just trying to just consider put myself in her shoes and just consider the stress she might be under and to be honest with you i wasn't really making business-minded moves because the kind of empathy i showed to her should only be given to people who are trying you know to to be amenable and i'll have to say it this lady just took my my kindness and my patience for a weakness which a lot of people do until they find out <laughs> that i'm not weak i just have a long fuse but see, people like me are dangerous when we have long fuses. And we, our fuses, when they eventually are extinguished, result in like, you know, catastrophic confrontations. Because we feel as if we've given you everything we can do and you've taken advantage of it. And so then at that point, there's no more mercy. Now, I'm not a violent person and I'm not one to go off and do all that craziness. I'm very quiet and very uh, subtle about my fury. I just don't have any more emotion for you. When I'm done, something clicks off and it's a wrap. So she, she cursed me out, told me off. I let her curse me out and tell me off. And then I calmly asked her, I said, so I'm not sure what you just said. I do hear you saying that the, the tenant that made the complaint against you also makes noise. I will deal with that. But this is not about noise. This is about the comfort level of someone who doesn't feel safe. I need you to make sure there's no one living in your apartment who is not on the lease and I will perform a spot inspection. I will inform Atlanta Housing Authority. They will perform spot inspections. I need you to not park in her space anymore. I need you not to make any more disparaging, looking for my dog, disparaging remarks, harassing or intimidating remarks to my other tenant. I want everybody to stay here and enjoy enjoy their place to stay. I want you to enjoy the apartment. I put a lot of work into it for you to enjoy it. And if I have to talk about this again, I'll have to make some decisions about asking you to leave. So of course she, you know, told me off, told me I was stressing her. Oh, you're stressing me. I'm stressed. You don't know what you're doing. What? Yeah, all of this. I said, well, I have to go. If I were to sit here and tell you all the things this lady did, I would. it would take five or six videos. So I'm just gonna give you some highlights. And I'm gonna stop this video because I have to get in for my next, for my next meeting online. And then um, I'll take a break at some point this morning and upload another video to tell you the other things she did and i'm going to give you a little teaser it involved um drugs okay yes i know too patient now i don't have a remote for this so i'm going to, have to turn this off and i'll see y'all soon